I'm going to walk you through a demo of the HCL Accelerate product. So HCL Accelerate is a tool designed to handle value stream management and high level business metrics associated with your software delivery process. And the way we do this is by integrating with all the different tools within your DevOps tool chain um, and using that data to actually drive reports, drive feedback, drive process identification to, to understand your bottlenecks, to understand areas that you can improve. So one of the ways we do this is with the value stream view that you're looking at right here. So this view is made up of a lot of dots and circles and symbols, as you can see. And each of these dots actually represents a piece of work. And these, these pieces of work are coming from tools like Jira. They're coming from tools like Rally or ServiceNow. And we pull that in and we sync constantly. And we connect those work items to any changes that happen associated with it, whether that be a code commit or a pull request or a test that runs or a security scan that runs. And as these items move and developers pick them up and changes are made, the dots actually flow across. And eventually they go from the backlog through the stages into the production stage. So if I click on one of these items that's in production, I'll actually see the, the summary of the item in JIRA at the top level. And then if I scroll down, I can see code metrics and approvals, all of the, the quality and security data that, that was run associated with this change. I see linked pull requests from GitHub. And I can see the history. I can see you know when it was created, who changed it, um, when the build happened, when it was deployed to each of these different environments. So with that information, we can give you these views that, that let you control you know, what's being worked on, how much is in progress, how much is in the merge state. We calculate how long on average each of these things take. So you can see, for example, selected for development. On average, my items are in that circle for three days. In progress, two days. And by clicking on one of these that has a, a red line around it, th those are actually the alert indicators. So. This one has a, an alert on it because it's been sitting in progress for eight days, but on average, there's only two days. So it's an indicator that something you know, might be wrong. This one similarly is, is unassigned and it's the in progress, which doesn't really make sense. So by giving you little feedback indicators like that, it's a good way to identify bottlenecks and identify areas of improvement. You'll also notice the metrics bar up here, which I can turn on and turn off. And this just gives you a summary of, of some of the metrics that we're, we're recording within this view. Um, for instance, lead and cycle time, how long on average is it taking to go from the backlog into production? Um, what's my overall result of my testing that's going on? What's my overall code coverage associated with all of these work items? How many incidents have been opened in the last 30 days? And of course, you know, deployment frequency and build frequency. How often am I doing those things? Um, which are common metrics that you're wanna, gonna wanna look at from a DevOps perspective. Similar to this view is the swim lane view, which is actually, it's the same information. It's just broken down by which developer owns that work. And you can see these dots are actually the same dots that were on the previous page. It's just now they're, they're showing up in this table view. Um, and this is really good for like scrum teams, especially in a working from home distributed environment um, of workers where normally you would have to get on a call and share this information. Everyone says what they're working on. But now with a view like this, you can just come in here and you can see exactly who's working on what. You can see who has a lot, who might be able to pick up some new work. And clicking on these dots is going to give you that same summary of the information. And finally, we have this pipeline view. So this one is a little bit more mechanical. It's gonna show me the actual applications that I have set up in, with CI CD pipelines that this particular team is developing. Um, I can add apps from different tools by going here, and you can map these applications to these various stages in the lifecycle. So I have dev, QA, and production. And then 
HCL Accelerate is going to give you an inventory of what versions are running in those environments. So you can see at the top level here, I have a, an application from Urban Code Deploy. I have some Jenkins applications, some Ansible scripts that run within here. And for the versions that are running in production, I'm actually able to gate these. I can say, you know, have my security scans completed, uh, have all my stakeholders approved of this change, um, is my code quality good enough, and if all of those are, are a yes, then I can actually deploy these into my production environment. Now, from this pipeline view, I'm also able to orchestrate the release of these applications. Um, and where this is interesting is that Accelerate is actually going to integrate with these tools in my, in my pipelines that I can kick off these deployments, whether those are being deployed through Jenkins, through HCL Launch, through Azure DevOps, through Urban Code Deploy, and we can set up deployment templates to control that. So if I go here and I say view my production deployment template, we can see all the tasks that I've created for when it's time to go to production, how do I want to deploy these apps? Maybe certain apps are dependent on one another and you need them to go one after the other. In this case, I'm actually deploying them all in parallel here. So you can see my five applications and their deployments. And we're also going to control things like approvals. Um, we're going to create and move the ServiceNow change ticket associated with this release through automatically. Uh, we have a notification step, and finally we wrap it up by setting that ServiceNow change to review to say, okay, my change management, my change manager or my release manager should come in here and make sure everything was released as expected and is looking good. HCL Accelerate also lets us do the release management piece from a larger scale, from an enterprise level. So for this example, I've created this June enterprise release Let's say I'm a company that re releases organization-wide once a month. What we have here is a breakdown of all of the plans that I'm going to production with this month. In this case, I only actually joined this release with one team, so you can see my loan processing value stream here, and the enterprise release plan, which is that higher level orchestration. We also link this to all of the release stories that might be a part of this release. In this case, coming from JIRA, we can see all of the approvals and we can see any change requests that have already begun to, to be created and to be pushed through. And these are coming from ServiceNow. Jumping back to my plans, let's take a look at the enterprise release. This is an example of my enterprise release during execution. So we've already created the ServiceNow change ticket. We've already gotten that ticket approved within ServiceNow. And now we're just wait, waiting on this manual roll call step. So if I click yes, we'll see how it automatically moves on. It automatically updates my ServiceNow ticket and it begins the release of these applications. So clicking this link is actually going to take me to my other deployment plan. And within here, you can see that I'm waiting on the approval of the owner of this value stream to say we're ready to release. And now we'll go ahead and create a change ticket for this team. And you can see how that automatically moved through ServiceNow and my deployments kick off. And What's going on now is Accelerate has actually initiated the deployment of all of these applications in all of these various tools. And this is where you get the power of the integration network that we have. Whatever plugins we, we control your pipelines with, we can kick those off. We give you a feedback loop and you can see what the progress. Now, once my deployments have completed, I can do my notify teams task, and finally move that ticket to the review state. If I jump back out to my enterprise plan, I can see that the one team that I had doing their deployment as part of this enterprise release has completed, and we're in the last smoke test phase. And as administrator, I'm gonna go ahead and approve this task and complete the enterprise release. Jumping back out here, you can see all the tasks have completed. You can see my change requests associated with my deployment and my enterprise plan are in place, as well as the approvals and all of their stories.
Finally, we have the Insights tab of Accelerate. And Insights is really where we're gonna give you all of that data in the form of visualized reports, things that you can filter, you can look at over time, you can see how you've transformed. And the way we do that is by letting you design these dashboards. You can create a dashboard that is specific to teams. It could be specific to security data. It could be specific to things like Dora metrics that typically come up on DevOps reports. And in this case, I've created this loan processing dashboard. And here I've pretty much just thrown all the data I have associated with my loan processing value stream that you saw at the beginning into one place. So I can change this to be grouped by day, by week, by month. I can set filters based on my teams or my value streams or my applications. In this case, I'll just leave that open. And we're looking at the past 90 days. So up here, you can say add charts. And this is going to give you the ability to add new charts to this dashboard um, just based on any information from the different tools we've integrated with. So I've already set that up here. You can see I have things like lead and cycle time, my build and deployment counts over time, where you can see all the different results that are coming in that might vary across the different tools. You can see workload uh, distribution, things like load, how many pull requests, commits, and tasks have been coming in in the past few weeks, um, how many contributors. Um, then down here I have a, a series of quality metrics. So my code coverage by line, that's coming from my sonar cube scans, uh, static code analysis, sonar cube as well, unit testing, app scan, security, static and dynamic analysis, um, the aggregate results of my one test server tests. That includes, you know, functional API, performance, um, anything that's, that's part of my one test suite is going to show up there. Um, I have another chart for my, just my functional tests. So just a lot of different information and you can drag these reports around, you can change the size of the charts, you can change what charts you're looking at. So it's very, um, very flexible in the way you want to view this data. And you can do things like change what your result is viewed by. If, if you don't care about the result, you care about your deployments, what environment, you can make it to view that. So you can see most of my deployments were going to the dev environment and hovering over it will give you that tool tip. You can also click on the magnifying glass of any of these charts, um, which get, brings you to the table, which links back to the tool that the integration is coming from. So it's, it's a lot of ability to, to drill in, to check out what's going on. And you can also download these, these files as CSVs if you want to do some outside data analytics um, or anything like that. And I can also finally you know, change between a stacked bar, a group bar, a line graph. Um, There's a lot of different things you can do. And what's, what's really nice about all of this is that typically most companies are going to have to create reports based on this sort of information every so often. A lot of what we've seen is that customers would be creating these manually. They'd have to take developers off to go and get the data. Um, on iterative cycles, but in this case, you know, once once you get Accelerate installed, once you get all your tools integrated, these dashboards are just going to be on demand whenever you need them, um, and you can create as many as you want. And that's about it for today's demo. So thank you for watching, and have a great day.